So uh, when I tell people where I work and that I work for an organization that seeks to promote moral capitalism, uh, it's usually greeted with a smirk and a chuckle. Uh, these individuals are typically a little younger, uh, the millennials, I guess, for the most part, uh, and they, uh, with their history of maturing during the crash of 2008, uh, typically ask me something along the lines of, moral capitalism, is that, isn't that an oxymoron? Um, with you having written two books on the subject, what is your response to that? And further, what can be done to combat the cynicism present in the population in general? Well, it's interesting because the, the, the title was suggested by our friend Fred Sen, who came out of advertising. He's one of the founders of the Fallon Advertising Agency uh, here in, in Minneapolis. And he wanted a title which would get people's attention. So he suggested moral capitalism. And even my reaction was kind of like, Fred, that's sort of, you know, potentially contentious. And he said, that's the point. If you want to get people's attention, you got to give them something that sort of the, it, that wakes them up or they get alert. They say, oh, that's an oxymoron or that's a dumb idea. And when we did this in 2004, that was basically a general reaction all around the world. Moral capitalism, what, what are you talking about? And, but that was designed to create an opening. The opening was to then ask, well, why? Why do you think that? Why should that be so? And usually people didn't have an answer. They were responding, perhaps like some of your friends were, with a sort of a gut emotional thing. That can't, you, you can't have apples and oranges. You've got to have either oranges or apples. You can't, put them, you can't have an, uh, an apple orange or something like that. Uh, but then you'd start the conversation before 2008 and say, why not? Well, why can't a company take good care of the environment? Why can't a company worry about its employees? What prevents it? And then people sort of say, well, nothing really prevents it. They just don't do it very much. Why? Well, now, now you're into a discussion about how businesses should make decisions. What, it, what, is the, what are the parameters around making profit? Uh, what is the role of, of, of uh, ethical standards, trust, reliability, integrity, uh, keeping your word, et cetera, et cetera? That then generally tends to move to discussions and arguments about people and human nature. And there's a lot of cynicism about human nature and other people as being greedy and not being able to live up to um, good or high standards of conduct. So that kind of underlying cynicism just, I think, washes over to these days. It washes over government, it washes over business, it washes over a lot of things. Cynicism about our politicians, uh, about a lot of media people, uh, or celebrities, quote unquote, this notion that it's just a false front. Um, and that somehow at the bottom of all this is just kind of greed and selfishness and taking advantage of other people. However, uh, after 2008, I found a change. Uh, and all around the world, that you sort of talk about moral capitalism, you'd give a lecture, it would be the topic of your lecture, they'd hear about the book, and they'd sort of say, oh, that's a good idea. That's what we want. We want the benefits of free market and growth and, and good material lives and well-being, but we also want something which is, which is more transcendental, if you will, more ethical, more concerned for society, more concerned for culture, more respectful of other people, more sustainable in the sense that we're not, we're not cannibalizing those things which, are, which we shouldn't because they're too close to us. Um, our friends, our communities, our water, our air, things like that. Um, and so I found in recent years a more of a, a growing hunger for a vision and a plan um, as to how we can have the benefit, how we can have our cake and eat it too. Uh, that, it, that it's win-win. It's not a zero-sum thing. If you get capitalism and you get growth, at the same time you're going to get environmental degradation and you're going to get extreme inequalities of wealth and income. Which just means people are asking for a solution to a problem. What is the solution? The solution, I think, goes to a couple of things, but fundamentally it goes to a mental state. It goes to having a sense of values. It goes towards the way you think about your business. Uh, what are the capital uh, accounts that you need in your business? If you need customers, you've got to take care of your employees. If, if your employees are good, your customers will be happy. If you need customers, you have to treat them in a proper way. You treat them in a bad way, your business is, is going to suffer. So this is where you have a win-win. The best way to be sustainably profitable 
is to take care of your customers, your employees, the people who give you money, your owners, people who lend you money, people in your supply chain so they give you good stuff. You gotta take care of your community, you gotta take care of the environment. So if you put stakeholders into your equation, if you have a sense of responsibility to all your stakeholders, you will be profitable, but you will also minimize negative externalities, that's what the economists say. So you will be profitable, but you won't impose costs on others. So that's how I think.